Well, hello and welcome to This Suffer Club. We're back in the studio, very excited, have a special guest on today, Mr. Stephen Cameron from the Social Run Podcast. That's not all where he's from. We're going to dive into why a podcast, runner podcast, first off, and his journey. Uh, It's a lot of fun, but I just wanted to remind you, in the previous video, I put how many stairs were at the Crowder's Mountain State Park backside trail i have stickers and nobody has given the correct answer and i'm kind of bummed about it but if you know the answer uh put it in and i will send out stickers but before we do that we have the intro So our special guest today is Stephen Cameron, and before we get him on the show, I wanted to play a clip from the podcast that I got the opportunity to be back on in January. Uh, Me and Stephen had connected through Instagram, uh, of all places, and he had seen some of my videos. It was weird. We'll get on how we actually got connected, because it wasn't through running. It was actually through something else. Uh, which not many people on this channel know that I have as well. But uh, here's the clip from uh, our episode on the Social Run podcast. Well, one of the things I love about doing the podcast and talking to people, I've had the opportunity to talk to a bunch of people over the past year, and it's just, it's just so cool. But I get these little nuggets of information, and and they just they mean the world to me. So it's it's the reason I do this, but. Recently, back in December, you done, and you mentioned this a little bit, you done a 20 hour and 20 minute run. It was just something you wanted to do yourself. But I was watching the video on that, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but in the video, and and you know, the cool thing when you see people do things like you're doing about this run is you can apply it to anything. So you have a statement in there about having a why, and then Mm -hmm. having a why for your why. Yep. And I thought to myself, you know what? That that's just something that's missing in most in life. A lot of yeah. people have a why, but having a why for your why is yeah. pretty darn critical and pretty crucial. Yeah. And I was like, look at there. That just solidifies a path right there for me. And you know, like I said, if I hadn't been prepping for this and and rewatching that and it, honestly, I'd seen the video before. I saw it right after you'd done it and just completely missed that whole statement right there. This was the takeaway that I was looking for for the whole conversation was having a why for the why. Well, hello and welcome, Mr. Steven. How are you, sir? Hey, Aaron, I'm doing great. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. I, you know, I, when I asked you to be in on the, the podcast, it had been raining for multiple days. Didn't know if we were ever going to see the sunshine, but you are in North Georgia. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. And it's sunny there, right? Oh, I got off work today, and it was 71 degrees. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, three days ago, or Sunday, I went running Sunday, and it was, you know, 28 degrees, so a big swing, but yeah, yeah, beautiful today. Yeah, the same here. It is actually sunny, and the ground is still soaking wet, but I'm very excited to have uh, the host of the Social Run podcast you yourself on uh, this channel because one, I love the podcast. Um, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to be on it. But for the for the listeners that don't know about the podcast, I'm going to uh, read the description that you have, um, and it says that I talk with with people that inspire me, motivate me, and that are just darn interesting. And they are uh, from everybody that you've had on the podcast. There's a lot of inspirational stories that have come out of the podcast. And so, uh, one, thank you for doing the podcast, but give a little background about the podcast and uh, and then we'll get into your journey and, you know, how you got into running and, and doing what you're doing. Yeah, well, about a year, a little over a year ago, I had a position change at work and I went into a position where I was training people and... I don't speak very well, so I was looking for something to do to improve improve my speaking. 
So I was talking to my wife and I, and I was telling her my dilemma and she's like, you know, what about a podcast? And I'm like, well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to do a podcast. And I looked right back at her and I'm, and I'm like, but what do I do a podcast on? And she, she just replied back, well, you like to run, you do it all the time. Why don't you do one on running? And so I started looking at an angle because there's tons and tons of, you know, running podcasts out there. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I really like the running community on Twitter and Instagram. So I'm going to reach out to people that I follow on social media and hence the name of my podcast, the social run podcast. And so, yeah, I started doing that and I reached out to about a dozen people and just, just to feel if people would be interested in doing it. And my goal was not to talk to elite athletes. It was just to talk to, what I would call normal runners or everyday runners that had extraordinary stories and just, you know, achieved stuff that a year ago or two years ago in my running journey, I thought was impossible. And yeah, that's kind of the, the genesis of it. Yeah. So let's, uh, one, I love it because you mentioned something about just average runners, not elite, because I think, you know, uh, that is, that is a the pro and the con in in the running community or the athletic community. There are a lot of people that you know maybe don't reach their full potential because they don't feel like they can because of some other person's stat that you know and and you know I, I try to be very cognizant of that in what I do on the channel. Now I'm putting up you know ridiculous videos, but I try to leave the times and stuff off of it because. It, it is very discouraging for a lot of runners and that's not what your podcast is about and that's not what this pod this you know channel is about it's about encouraging people so with all of that and the idea behind encouragement and getting people started let's start on your journey because where you're at now is not where you started and i've kind of got to hear a little bit about the story but tell the people like where did Mr. Cameron start in his uh, journey to what he's doing now. Well, I, you know, before I say where I started, I, I will tell you that I am nowhere near where I want to be. And I have huge goals. And when I compare myself to other people, I, I would sometimes I wouldn't even call myself a, a runner because, you know, I know I'm slow and I get out there, but I, I just keep getting out there and getting out there. And it, if it wasn't for the running community, I don't think I would still be doing it. But I really started uh, back late 2016. I went and had a physical and I was having headaches and aches in my arm. And I went to my doctor, had a physical done, and I was about 245 pounds. And my doctor basically told me, boy, if you don't change something, you're not going to see your daughters grow up. And wow. that just really shook me to my core. Yeah. Um, so I come home and started just, I started out by setting a goal of doing 10,000 steps a day. So it was really a 10,000 step a day challenge that I'd done. And I'd done that for, oh, over a year. Every single day I was just clicking them off. But I met a guy that went to my church that was running and started talking to him. He And he invited me to come out to a local track with him. So I went out to the local track with him and I ran a quarter mile, like all runners do, wide open as fast as I possibly could. And I laid down and I thought I was going to die. And, you know, I, I right then and there, I would have told you I would have never run again a day in my life. A couple of days later, I went back and I just kept doing it and kept doing it. And it, it got longer and longer and my times picked up a little bit but i got smarter and i quit trying to kill myself and and pacing myself but that was where running started and it you know it's coincidental how things work in life because the company i work at they sponsor a local trail running uh, organization here in georgia a, a race uh, series and so being a part of the company i got to sign up for these races for free and I'd never ran on a trail, even knew anything like that existed. So I saw a bulletin come out about it and I'm like, well, heck, it's free. Let me try it. And went out and done a five mile trail run and it it almost killed me. And, uh, you know, I'd done a couple of more of them. And then that was late 2016 and in 
I think April of 2017, I signed up for a trail half marathon and I done it in, it, it, it's embarrassing how long it took me. So it took me almost three and a half hours to do a trail half marathon. And when I finished that, I'm like, this is great. Yeah. So I signed up for a 35 miler in September and <laughs> I mean, 35 miler was my first, my first ultra. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it took me, uh, it was here in North Georgia, uh, a race called the Georgia Jewel. And that 35 miles took me over 10 hours to do and, you know, a lot of climbing yeah. for yeah. the South, but yeah. And I, Aaron, I fell in love with yeah. it and I just, kept going you know kept signing up for races and pushing myself and um i've had tons of failures at races and nothing spectacular but you know going from somebody that was over 240 pounds to somebody that's sitting around 160 and really the only thing that changed in my life was running and and moderating food i didn't do a big diet change but yeah i just started running and you know it doesn't matter to me if it's raining outside, if it's freezing outside, if it's you know melting hot outside. If you put me outside on a trail, I'm I'm in the happiest place in the world. Yeah. So uh, unpacking that, I that is a that is a massive thing, and I I, I wished more people could understand. You know that we have these pivotal moments in our life of a doctor saying, okay you're you better get this under control or else right yeah. and so a lot of people have to have that you know reckoning to make a conscious decision because you know naturally nobody's going to put themselves in that position where if i ran a quarter of a mile i feel like i'm going to die right i mean so right. you know that you need to have this tension it, it sounds like for a lot of people, and I and I really wished that it didn't have to come to that, right? You know, I, we've got some friends in our life that really need to tighten up, but you know, they they're not going to unless they get, you know, a a, a, a ultimatum from the doctor saying, right. you know, it's it's that case. Now, now there is something to say about the pattern that you created because you said you started with you know 10,000 steps a day and by all means do not take the next statement that I'm going to say that 10,000 steps is not a lot but that is a digestible number for a lot of people right and so you started to figure out how you could digest this and break this down in a most recent video that I did I made a statement in it that if you do not like running, do not run. If you do not like to ride a bike, do not ride a bike. If you do not, whatever it is, there are so many different ways to alter your life patterns that will eventually lead you into a health uh, conscious mindset. And I think that's where you're at currently at this moment. You know, you're probably in the, the same sense that I'm in where I the only reason why I changed my diet was because of my exercise. Right. So like you didn't want to eat a hamburger because you were going to go run. It's not that you didn't want to eat a hamburger. It's just the running was as important, if not more than, um, than the food. And so you eventually over time, uh, curated that. So you said you were doing trail runs and that, that, did you do road or did you just automatically go to the trail? I, I done a 5k. The first, I guess, official race I ever done was a 5k and it was sponsored by the church that I was going to. And it was the most painful and unfun thing I'd I'd ever done in my life. Yeah. And honestly, it was pretty quick after that when somebody introduced me to the trails at work. And if it hadn't been for that, running probably would have been over with because I, I was interested in improving my life and getting healthier, but I didn't like I did not like that road run. It was not fun. I would not have continued it. I would have found something else. But yeah, it's yeah. So if you there was that one road run, yes. If you're not going to listen to any more in the podcast, take it from two guys that only ro- I only ran the road because that was all I knew. So I did not know about trail running. I knew about mountain biking, 
but I didn't know people ran the trails. And as soon as I found that people ran the trails, I mean, I went from a 5K on the road to a 50K in the trail because I was like, oh, this is so much better. Like, you know, this is going to be miserable. And if I'm going to be miserable, I'd much rather be in the trail where at least, you know, there's some some beauty than, you know, honking cars and broken sidewalks. So, So you you know, did your trail run, Georgia Jewel, you've done all that, but, you know, fast forward a little bit, and now you're, you know, going out in sub-freezing temperatures, you're going out in the snow, you, you're, you've you got some big goals. Uh, let's, let's jump around to some of the races that you did. So, you did one back in, was it December or November? And it was a 24 hour, it, is that correct? Yeah, I done a 24 hour one back in December. Um, I didn't do the whole full, the, I did not run the, the full 24 hours. I started having issues uh, with my leg and and I went back to my cabin that was right on the course and I just kind of rolled my leg and massaged my leg and all that. And I was down for probably about four hours. Um, the course was just a one mile loop and it was raining and it was cold and it was about 225 foot of elevation per loop. And I got to a point where I, it hurt to walk. So yeah. I went back to the cabin and I just rolled and, and massaged my leg for a while and it got better. And I just got, got back out there and I ended up doing 51 miles and about 12,000, a little over 12,000 foot of wow. elevation. And that was at that point in time the farthest I'd ever gone and the most elevation I'd ever done. And wow. you know, it was just a one mile loop over and over and over. But it was so much fun. I mean, it was, well, when again, we talk- it was a PR for me. So it was so, it, that made it really enjoyable. Yeah. Well, when we talked on your podcast and I heard you talk about this run that you did, there's a few takeaways that, you know, if anybody's ever wanting to do something like this, you made it honestly harder on yourself than I think anybody else, you know, would think about. Like you think, okay, a cabin will be great, but it is the easiest exit for a one mile deal. Having a car there is a, is the easy exit. And so, I mean, every uh, what let's say if it's a one mile loop, every ten to fifteen minutes maybe a little bit longer as it got on, but you had every 10 to 15 minutes, you had to decide, am I going to keep going around? Right. And man, that is mental. And so that is mentally harder than, or as hard as the physical, because we don't want to take anything away from the physical 24 hours or 250 feet of elevation. Every mile is a lot of climbing. And so like how much of your, how much of your exercise has supported the mental uh, progression in your life? Like, have you seen a correlation to what you're currently doing in your mental, um, I don't want to say stamina, but mental strength than, than the physical? Yeah. I, when I think about it and I talk to other people about it, there's, there's a point in suffering where you're, you're going to suffer no matter what. So you can stop and continue to suffer or you can suffer and continue to move. And that clicked in my head one day. And I, you know, I've, I've had a couple of DNFs and when I look back on them, both of them were probably 30 minutes after I stopped, I would, I could, I knew I could have kept going. And so it took, it took that happening to me twice before it really clicked in my head, but um, the impacts on life itself past that, you know, I, I take on projects that I never would have, I, you know, volunteer for them. I do other things around community that I never would have before just because of that mindset. It, it's, it, you know, and I think a bigger piece for me, Aaron, is the impact that it has on my daughters because yeah. they see me do things that, you know, people who do trail running, there's there are tons of people like us out right. there, but we're not the norm. Right. So my daughters see me doing things that 
that's not normal and that's really hard. And, you know, some days I come home and get out of the car and I can barely walk mm-hmm. for a couple of minutes and they see me pushing through that and then getting out in the yard playing with them. Yeah. You know, and just building, just giving them that visual um, to me, that's that's worth everything to me right there in itself. But, yeah, it's it's a. um yeah, that's that's definitely big. I mean, we both have children, and our children are very similar in age. And it, it's, you know, uh, the one part of the podcast that I was playing, we we're talking about the why, and and it was a, a conversation that me and you had about the why. And you know, for I know for me, and I know for you, because of talking, you know, our kids are a big part of the why of of why we're doing. There are a lot of times in this that you know the i I don't want to label it as pain and suffering because it's you know it's in it's if i did it and i'm the one personally doing it that's a whole different you know we need to get my brain checked but uh nobody wants to self-inflict pain or wounds but there is a level that we me and you are willing to push past through because we know that our I, that other eyes are watching us my children are watching i could give a crap if i get any views on any of these videos but i know that my kids are watching i know that your kids are watching you and there's it will just hold us out and you know at the end of the day we are much better stronger individuals take the sports away from it right take the Absolutely. take the 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 trail running I, i'm never going to be a sponsored collegiate runner right as painful as that is to process because that's what i've always wanted to be i'm just kidding uh but you know we're not going to be that and you know i'm a midfield backfield runner now and um but we have eyes watching it and so i i just wondered you know from the mental aspect, how much mental and physical um, has this been? So, yeah, it's it's been a a it's been for me as much of a physical or a mental journey as it has a physical. Um, I I think before running and and pushing myself, there are so many things that I can look back on that I just gave up on too quickly and too easily because I didn't want to push myself through it. And yeah, now if I could go back and do it again, you know, those famous last words, if I could redo it, then I definitely would have taken a different approach. But those opportunities, when they happen in the future, they definitely won't pass. They definitely won't pass me by. Yeah, no, I I agree 100 percent. I mean, you know, I'm a drastically different person now because of just exercise or the mental clarity that I have gotten in a trail run or the mental clarity that I've gotten by going out. I mean, currently at this moment in the state that our state, our United States is in and the mental clarity that a lot of people need, um, you know, exercise is is just extremely important. You know, when I'm having a rough day, I'm going to head for the trails. I'm going to get on my bike. I'm going to go run, whatever it is, because I know I'm going to get mental clarity out of it. So uh, let's jump back over to the podcast because I know that's where we started. And I really appreciate you sharing your journey and how you got to this point. But we're going to talk about a little bit of the stories that you've gotten, some of the takeaways, the nuggets uh, of the podcast, because um, now you've been a year into this is it a, over a year on the podcast um, almost a year so almost. a couple more weeks and it will be a solid year oh fantastic well that, that's super exciting um we'll, before we get to the end we'll have a link in the description but if somebody wants to uh go right now and subscribe to the podcast what would they search and what podcast platforms are they on yeah i i am the podcast is the social run um, so if you're on Instagram or Twitter, either one, those are the two platforms that I use. You can search the social run or the social run podcast and it comes right up. As far as uh, podcast apps, you pick your favorite app. It, it's out there. Uh, the service that I use does a really good job of helping you get it, get on all platforms. So if you're an Apple person, it's there. If you use a PC, it's there. But yeah, simply search for the social run and it's very easy to find. So I went back through and listened to a bunch of the podcasts, but if we had to take 
maybe the top three conversations that you've had and you took a nugget and I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but what would you say is been some of the takeaways or if like our listeners or watchers are thinking, okay, I now come to this podcast and you know, they've got a year's worth of episodes. Where would you tell someone to kind of go to or what to search for? I know that's kind of putting you on the spot, but what would you say is a, a good on ramp for people on the podcast? Yeah, so I'm glad you didn't ask me for my favorite episode because <laughs> I would have had to have told you to begin. It was the one with you. Well, you know, <laughs> so, I could have. Um, I was gonna. Yeah, I was I gonna stack the deck. You like that. <laughs> Well, you but, know, your podcast was okay, but there's a one that was... No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. But no, there's there there would be no way to, for me to pick out my favorite one. There's so many people that I've talked to, and my podcast, and I told you before, I, I'm not trying to talk to the elite runners. That's just... I mean, they're they're awesome. They really are, and, and so inspiring and motivating, and you can hear them everywhere, but... My goal was to reach out to people on social media that inspired me and that motivated me. And and I like to call them normal people. And that being said, when I talk to them, they're not normal. Yeah. They're they're incredible and they're inspirational and they make me go, wow. And yeah, yeah um, but they're all people that I follow on social media. Yeah. So, well, I, 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 I'll, I I'll tell you one of mine that I've listened to multiple times because I've tried to nitpick it apart is the lady who talked about coffee uh, being not essential for a pre-run uh, beverage. And I was like, oh, these are fighting words uh, because I said I would talk about how we got connected and we did not get connected through running. We actually got connected through coffee. Yeah. Which is uh, interesting. I, I don't cross pollinate uh, a lot of times because I have many irons in the fire and I run a podcast as well called The Coffee Snobs. And you happen to listen to the Coffee Snobs podcast and yep. you were like, wait a minute. And you started searching it up and then you found me on Instagram and then you were like, hold on, you run? And it was just this weird circle. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's how we got connected. Uh, but, yeah, one of your listener, or one of your conversations was that coffee was not a pre-run uh, beverage. And I was like, no, it is. Well, <laughs> even incredible people don't know everything. So exactly. I, I, I will leave it at that. But, no, uh, she's a nutritionist. And yeah. She's absolutely wonderful and, and, and an incredible athlete in her own right. But, yeah, you know. We yeah, no coffee is definitely essential. So, <laughs> well, it, it's it no, it was definitely a great podcast to kind of. I'm I'm giving her you know flack on it, yeah. but like when she started breaking down why it wasn't, and I fully un you know agree a hundred percent. Like for me, I am a coffee fanatic. You know, yeah. I I drink way too much coffee, uh, but I know that I've got to balance out my water because the coffee dehydrates me and I will cramp very quickly. I drink straight black coffee um, and, you know, no, no f extra fru flu fru in it. And I mean, I'm like, I had three uh, Americanas today, which for the listeners that don't know, it is uh, two shots of espresso and then basically like six ounces of water yep. and that's it. And so I'm, you know, like right now, I got that had four of these cups before the episode. There's that's water, um, because I know if I don't, I will seize up here shortly. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's been any other any other episodes that kind of like you know turn the listeners to or um, any that stand out to you or any you stories. Know, I I have a friend that I met through a lady I work with. Um, his name is Michael Scoggins, and he's from Peru. And I met him, I think about three months after he moved to the States. And I remember meeting him at a local race that my company sponsored. And I looked at him and he had you know, these quads that looked, they, I mean, they were just so impressive. And, and I remember when the whistle went off to start the race, and he's a few years older than I am. And he took off like crazy. And, and I think he finished first or second on that race. And it was a five miler or maybe a seven miler. But 
I got to talking to him after the race and he was, I looked at him and, I, and he looked like an, an ultra runner. He looked like somebody who would always podium and somebody that really wasn't, a, you know, approachable, but I got to talking to him and there was a, a slight language barrier, but he was the nicest person. Wow. And from that, from that day, every time I reach out to him, he offer you know he provides me with any piece of information that wow. i wanted and i look at the things that he's done um you know he's done he's run in hawaii he's run in brazil wow. he's running peru he's run in china wow. and it's you know he's not a professional yeah he he does this for fun and i i'm like you know those initial conversations got me thinking what a way to see yeah the world when yeah. you go places to do races and i i think that was probably one of the most inspiring people that i met early on that just really got me into the community and opened my eyes to the things that could happen and yeah so there's a language barrier there but he was probably one of my favorite conversations just because you know i think initially when i started running he was kind of like that idol out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Then, then come to find out, he's a, a normal guy. Yeah, and yeah. So now I will say that with me, the, that's kind of a great place to start. Yeah, with the trail running community, I think for a lot of runners, if you want an on ramp where the community doesn't feel stuffy or doesn't feel unapproachable, the trail running community is that. Like it is yeah. the it is the best on ramp because. You know, what I told people in trail running is if you walk in a trail race, you're smart, right? Yeah. Like in a, in a foot race on the road, if you walk, uh, you should be running, right? Yeah. But in a trail race, if you walk, you're actually a smart, uh, efficient um, uh, trail runner. And so, like, you know, that's a big barrier for a lot of people. A lot of people feel like if they, you know, walk – that it's you know they should rather just dnf than than walk and you know I, that's that's something that's extremely frustrating because we we've all been there where you're like i should be running i should be faster but the trail running community is like no hey you, you're fatigued walk this walk this hill or walk this flat like just you know recover like you know there's going to be some roots you probably be, yeah. need to be more cognitive aware than you know than your abilities of putting down a fast pace so uh yeah that's that's pretty exciting so with the podcast go uh sign up subscribe comment like go ahead and hit the bell and like turn it on and you know give a review like if you're gonna listen to it to the people that are watching this video if you're gonna listen to it take the time to write a review and give it some stars that way to get the ranking up like guys it's an easy thing to do to give some love uh but uh before i end you are in north georgia and i one thing that i want to do is for anybody that wants insight into north georgia because we don't live in north georgia we're in north carolina what is your favorite trail in the north georgia area and name location city that way if anybody's listening to this and they may happen to work in the north georgia area or you know be driving through like your friend who has been able to run across the world uh where would you tell somebody to go run if they were coming to north georgia aaron anything above atlanta north of atlanta is absolutely wonderful yeah where we are we we've got forest we've got mountains and we've got a lot of wildlife management areas where people can run um this past weekend the the appalachian trail starts in georgia and so this past weekend i met a friend up above hawassi georgia so about 15 miles south of the carolina line okay and we just done a 12 mile or 11 mile out and back with about 7,500 foot of gain out of it. And wow, that was the first time, the first time I'd ever run that section of the AT and, oh, it was so beautiful. I mean, it's just the Appalachian trail in Georgia is incredible. And I mean, it, you know, it starts here. So yeah. a lot of people like to say it starts up North. It doesn't, it starts here in Georgia. <laughs> it, it's absolutely beautiful. So um, there's about 80 miles of, of the Appalachian Trail here in Georgia, that's a great place to run. Wow. And 
you know, it's it's not it's not um, super easy. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. It shouldn't be. I mean, you yeah. get out there and you just enjoy what's beside the trail and yeah. enjoy the views and enjoy the scenery and that's what makes it special. Well, I really appreciate. It. I'm definitely. I came to North Georgia. Uh, I was a little bit off of where you were. I was in Helen riding my bike, and it was like a week or two after I'd done the podcast, and it was an out-and-back trip. So I'm going to definitely get down and run, and we'll actually make a video instead of having to do this through virtual because we've never met um, besides uh, virtually. But I really appreciate you taking the time to hop in and to chat with me and to, you know, encourage the listeners to start wherever they're at and keep going and you know i mean now you're talking to you know anybody that's running um and so i I know that you always like talking with people so if you want to talk on this podcast you probably can slide into the dm into uh down in the uh notes of this video We'll give links to his Instagram, to the Instagram podcast, to his personal one, to the Twitter, and that way you can connect. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to hop in. And uh, I'm yeah, I'm happy to talk to you. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, it's been definitely a lot of fun. And so we will catch you next Thursday at 5 p.m. right here on the Suffer Club podcast. Adios. <laughs>